After you watch this video, you will hopefully understand how to take professional, high quality night photos using nothing but an iPhone. And for this video, I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro Max, even though the iPhone 14 has just been released, but I haven't upgraded yet. And hopefully also after you watch this video, you will understand why I haven't chosen to upgrade my iPhone yet, even though it is a camera that I use a lot these days. Now, I gotta be honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of phone photography up until literally just a couple months ago when I decided to upgrade to the iPhone. I was actually using a Samsung Galaxy Note 10, a phone made in 2019. And up until that point, phones really weren't quite at the level required for high quality photography, especially in a limited environment like a nighttime city photography. But now I feel like these cameras are already at a point where you definitely can get away with using them. Now for the purpose of this video I'm using the iPhone 13 Pro Max because that is the phone that I have but you really only need an iPhone 13 or even an iPhone 12. Really it's not about the specific iPhone that you have, it's more about how you use it as cliche as that sounds. Now usually when people first start learning about photography or when they want to seem like they know about photography they talk about settings. And camera settings are something that are good to know, but really they are not as important as you may think. Because good photos are more about the setting itself than camera settings. It's about good light and composition. And on the iPhone, you can't even really change the camera settings if you're using the native camera app. We have to work without it, but it's not as big of a deal as you would think, because again, you don't really need to control the settings to take good photos. And in this video, we're gonna cover three main keys to take good photos with an iPhone. First of all, how to spot good light and how to take good photos in general, but in a simplified way. Second, the mistakes to avoid, and yes, a little bit of how to use the camera to the maximum potential. And third, how to get the most out of your image by post-processing, because if you do want to take photography seriously, you do have to do a little bit of post-processing, especially during the nighttime, because you're still a little bit limited by the technology by physics. Even if you weren't using an iPhone, night photography is often a combination of taking the image that you edit later and then release the full product than trying to get perfect image in camera. If you're trying to get the perfect image in camera, the result is never going to be that good. So that is the secret of most professional or experienced photographers editing. But don't worry, that is something you can also do on the phone and it's not as complicated as it may sound. Now, when it comes to taking good photos at night or otherwise, what you should actually be looking for is good light. A flat image is rarely interesting or visually pleasing. What you want to find, what you want to look for is that light, the contrast between the light and the darkness. Having an iPhoto that is completely lit up and flat, even if it's taken with a $50,000 low light camera, is not going to be artistically pleasing if the lighting is flat. So you actually want the contrast between the highlight and the shadow. And the shadow can often be completely dark and it's not gonna hurt your image. And therefore you don't even need the best performance out of your low light sensor. You just need the right kind of a mindset and you need to find the pleasing light. Now in more practical terms, for example, if you're taking photos of people in a city at nighttime, often you're gonna be able to find things. You're gonna be able to find the light to light up the models or your friends or the person you're taking a photo of, find a way to light up their face. Often it's like, you know, lights, not lights like these, but traffic lights or other sorts of lights. Neon lights are perfect for this. Or if you want to take it really seriously, instead of, you know, upgrading to the latest, newest phone, spend like 50 bucks on an LED panel that you carry around and you can light up the model's face and all of a sudden your photography is going to go up by a lot just by making this one mindset and um, change in your way of thinking. Now similarly, if you're taking a night landscape, look for the source of light and think of a way to compose it in a way where the source of light is the focus. Or if you're taking street photos, I think street photos are probably the most difficult thing to do on a phone. But if you're taking street photos, you just gotta find the artificial light source during a city and then try to compose your images using that light source. And it is only after we find good light is when we should start thinking about the so-called settings, but 
in this case again we're not controlling the settings in terms of the shutter speed or the aperture or the um, ISO setting because we can't even do that on the iPhone or simply controlling the uh, exposure slider in this case and when it comes to night photos usually you don't want to ask your camera too much so you should be just exposing for those highlights the highlights shouldn't be bright and all of the parts of the image that you want to keep dark the shadows you should keep them as dark as possible so that you don't push the sensor inside of the camera too much what this typically means is underexposing the image Often phone cameras are also biased towards overexposure, which is probably just for you know general populace, but especially during the nighttime, you don't wanna overexpose your images, you wanna go the other way around. Now a couple more tips about the settings. If your phone is the iPhone 12 or after, I believe, you wanna turn on Pro Raw for more serious images because shooting in RAW allows you to capture more um, details in the files. It's gonna be a bigger files, so remember to turn it off for more casual photos, but for serious photos that you really wanna capture the most possible shoot in RAW, and then we're gonna edit it later, but more about that in a bit. And especially if you have the pro version of the phones, you'll have three different lenses, but I would always be biased towards the main lens because the main lens is always, and it has always been the best lens. The wide angle lens isn't that good in capturing a lot of light, and the telephoto lens on the iPhone is frankly almost unusable. It's pretty awful at nighttime because there's so much AI stuff added to the image because the you know, actual camera is not very good. So whenever possible, you wanna to stick to the main lens. And you know, if you're shooting on the street, if you have an ability to walk, zoom with your feet, just get closer to the subject or further away from the subject and use your main lens rather than being lazy and just switching lenses and not moving your feet. Zoom with your feet, that is gonna result in much better images. The main lens also on the 13 especially and 14 has the best stabilization. So you can allow the camera to capture more light by using the stabilization. The other lenses don't have as good of a stabilization yet. So avoid using those whenever possible. You can still use the wide angle. I wouldn't use the telephoto unless absolutely necessary. And do not like pinch in the zoom switch the lenses you can long press the screen to lock your exposure so it doesn't automatically adjust it which is kind of annoying so you better lock it to the exposure that you want if you're taking several photos and one more tip never shoot with a dirty lens if you see this mudgy highlights just take your shirt and clean the lens and you're gonna have a much better time All right, so now that we have a bunch of images with good light that are shot and underexposed, preferably in RAW, it is time to edit your photos. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a step that you really wanna do, especially for night photography. It allows you so much more flexibility, you get higher quality results, and you get to add a little bit of artistic flair into your photography as well. And the good news is that you can use the most popular way to edit your photos directly on the phone. You can use Adobe. Lightroom, which is also a popular desktop application. I, because I do so much photography, I have the Adobe Creative Cloud Sync. So when I edit my photos on the computer, I can just pull it up on the phone as well and the edits sync. But even if you don't pay for that, you can still use the um, mobile version of the app on your phone, which is very useful because it's pretty much the, uh, it's the same app as the full version, almost. You can do all of the things we can do with a full version. And there's a lot of editing tutorials on this channel and on YouTube in general that you can learn about this. But we're just gonna keep it simple for the purpose of this tutorial and the couple examples of the photos that I took there. I'm gonna show you how I edit them and give you a basic breakdown of things that I would most commonly do for night photos. The simplest thing you can do is to bring up the exposure to the correct level exposure. It is still better to do this in post than in real life because if you do it in real life, you'll blow up your highlights too easily and then they don't look very good. But now you preserve the highlights and also have nice shadow depth. If you want to be artistic, one of the best ways to add some color is by going to the temperature slider and making the image cooler, colder in the temperature. You can also change the tint for more purple or more green. That is of course up to you. I just find that my photos typically work better in the colder white balance tint, but you can do whatever you want here, really. If you wanna reveal more of the shadows, you can bring up the shadows slightly higher, and you can also reveal more details in the highlights by going the opposite way in the highlights. Just try to keep it tasteful. Don't go too HDR, it doesn't always 
work or look good. Sometimes it does, it is a little subjective, but that's what I would do a lot of the time, especially when shooting these kind of neon lit landscapes that we have here in Seoul, South Korea. Then we're gonna increase the contrast from the curves a little bit. This may seem a little bit more complicated. I have more videos about this on my channel as well, but just pulling down the curve a little bit here is something you can do to make the contrast look better instead of just using the slider because you can control exactly where you change the contrast. It's getting a little bit more complicated, I realize. And then vignette often looks quite good for night photos because it, again, like I talked about in the first part of the image, you want the highlight, the light to be good. So adding a little bit of darkness on the edge of the image, which would often be kind of like a mistake in photography. Old camera lenses have a lot of vignetting and it's used to be like, um, you know, a fault, a flaw of these lenses, but in night photos, it actually looks good. So we can add that from this slider. Turning down the clarity and the haze allows a little bit of this dreamy feeling, but that is a very artistic choice. You can also go the other way for clarity to make it more clear, which is something that a lot of people like as well. Now, the reason I didn't upgrade the iPhone 14, at least not yet, is because they really didn't add that much to the cameras. The main camera is pretty similar. It's slightly wider, slightly better in low light, but it's already good enough. And the telephoto is still terrible on the iPhone 14. The wide angle is somewhat better from what I hear, but not enough to really make me care too much about upgrading. Maybe I will do it later, but it's not something that is very urgent because all these other things that I just talked about are much more important. I also use my iPhone a lot for filmmaking or videos, but also for a lot of the B-roll that I shoot on this YouTube channel this way around, but mainly for Instagram Reels and TikTok. I have another video about how to get the most of your iPhone or at least tips for shooting you know, videos on your iPhone, which you can also check out on my channel. Hopefully you like this one. Thanks for watching.